Okay, I want to go over just a few of the things that are different in the Pro version and why I think that it's important uh, to upgrade. If you're serious about doing some testing and want some more parameters, uh, the regular version is great and uh, I think you'll find the Pro version is just that much better. A few of the things you can do uh, that you can't do in a regular version, you can graph the temperature here and you can set a recovery time. So what will happen is, as you can see, a normal discharge and the temperature is coming up. And at here, the test cuts off. And that's normally where it would stop graphing. When you're doing the temperature graphing, what it does is allow it to continue on. So you can see the temperature here continued to go up after the test stopped here. Continued to go up, which is normal. And then you can see it started to drop down. What this does is allow you to see that if the temperature continues to go up, there may be a problem in the pack. And that's just kind of a neat feature. Another thing that you can do here is calibrate your uh, both temperature and the leads that you connect your battery with. So if you're, you're connecting up with whatever kind of system you're using, plugs, uh, be they Deans or, or whatever, you can go in and do some voltmeter readings, plug in the settings here against what the settings are uh, that the CBA is picking up and it'll calibrate so the resistance of your wires and plugs are taken into account just that much more accurate. Here's something that's great in the pro version you can do notes and I'll show you some graphs that I've done and what it allows you to do is go in at various points and just add in notations so you can go back later either for comparison or just for your own memory just to jog at what you've done. Here's a couple other uh, things that you can do in the pro version. Different types of tests. Uh, in the regular one we just tell it hit it with 5 amps, it holds a constant current and it cuts off the tests at the end of the uh, voltage cutoff point, whatever you've chosen. What you can do here is one test is a duty cycle measurement. What that does is allow you to hit it with a certain current for so many seconds or minutes, pull it off, let it stay off for a few minutes, and kick back on. Uh, I'll show you one I did. Uh, if you're a car racer or if you're a uh, limited motor run type person, uh, this gives you a really great way to see how your battery is going to perform under those conditions as opposed to just being a constant current discharge. The other thing you can do is you can go in and tell it, I want to pull 50 watts power from this battery pack the whole time. And what that does is it will hold a constant 50 watts during your discharge cycle. So as the voltage drops, say you start at 10, say let's talk about 100 watts. You get 10 volts, 10 amps, that's 100 watts. As your voltage drops down during the test, this ramps up the current. So you'll always have that 100 watts through the whole test. Whereas a normal constant current test, it, holds, it would hold the 10 amps. But as your 10 volts drops, the 10 amps would be there and your total wattage would drop. So it's a constant power testing uh, section. And the last uh, thing you can do on the graphing is a Ragone graph type. It's a Ragone plotting, uh, which it allows you to compare different types and sizes of batteries on the basis of uh, power density, uh, power to weight ratios. Uh, it can be a little confusing when you first look at the graphs, but uh, overall it really is an interesting way to say compare a nickel metal pack to a lipo pack and see which one are you better off in a particular application. Um, I'm going to get out of the help file here. We'll pop in. Here's a Ragon uh, test I had done. And what we do is we show uh, a Sanyo 2400 nickel metal hydride pack. I've got an A123 pack here. A uh, Thunder Power Extreme pack here and an Apogee 2000 milliamp Generation 1 LiPos. These, uh, th that pack is about five years old. And I took all the defaults, so the discharges were all done at a 1C. And you can look to see, ideally, the further to the right and the higher up you are on this chart, the better battery uh, would seem to be. 
on the left hand side of the chart, if you think of uh, that side on your vertical axis, is the uh, how, how much energy is actually stored in the cell. On the horizontal axis is how quickly it can be delivered. So the ideal battery, you want a lot stored in it and you want to be able to get it out quickly. So the higher and to the right would be that section. And at a 1C discharge, it would appear that our old generation 1 pack is actually better than the other. Now from experience, I know that uh, that's only a 10C pack and I'm going to hit that pack with 20 or 30C or 25C, say, and my Thunder Power pack is going to just knock it out of the water in actual usage. But it's interesting to see uh, at a 1C discharge where these uh, compare. Uh, obviously the nickel metal uh, heavier, it suffers a weight penalty. A123 has got the good energy density. Uh, here's our current generation LiPos, which really uh, is better in real use. So, although it looks like you'd say, okay, that the Generation 1 LiPo pack is the best, we know in real world uh, that isn't going to be the case uh, under the current draws we're going to use. But it's just an interesting way to compare things. Uh, generally, all three packs have the same milliamp, uh, ranging from uh, 2,000 to 2,400 milliamp, uh, different technologies. Let's look at some other tests. And let's go in here and look at a constant power test. Uh, there. This uh, constant power test, I took this, uh, it's a 3S LiPo pack, and we discharged uh, at, well, we, we set it for a 50 watt constant test. So here's what you can see. And you see little steps along here, and that's because as the voltage drops, of course, the current goes up because it's going to maintain 150 watts for whatever current it requires right until the end. And at the end of the test, uh, at 9 volt cutoff for the 3 uh, S-Pack, we had 1,848 uh, amp, or, well, 1,848 milliamps, or 1.848 amp hours. And I happened to be plotting the temperature, and I wanted to just make a note to myself that it was 104 degrees at the end of the test. So that's a constant power test. And we can go in here and look at... Okay. This is a duty cycle test. And what I did was, say, say I'm a car racer, and I'm running oval track, and I know that I'm full throttle for 8 seconds. When I go through the end of the oval turns, I'm full off throttle for about four seconds as I drift through the turn, and then I'm back on. So what I did was I set up a duty cycle test where I'm on for eight cycles, or eight seconds, and I'm off for four seconds. I hit it with 10 amps each time, and I let that run out until I hit my 3S discharge point of nine amps, or nine volts, I'm sorry. Uh, the test ran for 13.9 minutes, 1,410 milliamps and 103.7 degrees on a temperature. So I just made these notes in here and it just lets me know that I ran, say, 14 minutes at that. Now, 10 amps may not be enough. Uh, if you want to add an amplifier, you could set that to, say, draw your 50 amps during your full throttle and you'd get the same thing. But this gives you an idea of what a duty cycle test will do for you. So that's it. Uh, I hope you found something useful in there. I think this, the CBA2 is something that is just a great thing to have in your shop. Uh, I enjoy using it. I do a lot of testing and it, it allows me to track things and find out problems before I hit them in the air and cause some damage. I hope this has been some help. Check out West Mountain Radio's website. Look at their crimping tool for Anderson power pole connectors if you use those. I, I think it's the best $50 you'll ever spend in the shop if you're putting on a lot of connectors. Thanks and be careful.